Hi ho, Profil is back on YouTube. Today I'm here in the boiler room because I want to show you all the piping and the instrumentation that are letting our house heating system work. Okay, let's go. Our house heating system is based on the firewood boiler that is the Froling T4E wood chip boiler. It is uh, one of the most technological and innovative firewood boilers in the market up to now and it is fully automated not only for the feeding and the combustion part, you can see many videos in the channel, but more importantly for the pumps and all the valves that you can see here and that are actually those components required to run the house heating system properly. Today the description of the system will follow the water flow, so let's start from the output point that is the wood chip boiler. The first part of the pipe is quite big because it hosts a lot of uh, instruments. First of all, there is a thermometer that is measuring the output temperature of the water coming directly out of the boiler. You may reach here, in fact, quite high temperatures. We are talking about 75, 80 degrees in regime conditions, so you have to keep them monitored, okay? You have also a pressure sensor that is measuring at that moment two bars and finally a very important component that is a, a safety relief valve that actually opens when the pressure inside the circuit uh, goes up too much okay it is actually obviously a, a safety system after this you can find a very simple but also very important component that is a, a T connector I'm gonna tell you how the system works the first thing to do is to heat up the house, okay? It is the highest priority thing to be done. Pumps are running, they do require hot water from the boiler, so the water takes the perpendicular branch and it goes here in the water collector so that, that it can reach radiators inside the house and heat the house properly with high temperature water. Then once you have reached the desired temperatures in your rooms, in your house, Pumps are not running anymore, they do not require any more hot water, so the hot water coming from the boiler now takes the straight path and goes directly into the boiler, the, into the main puffer, the, the, the water collector for the hot water. Okay? The same design is done at the bottom in the cold water circuit. The T connector works exactly the same. You have that um, if the house is heating up, the, the, the cold water returns here in this pipe and then goes in the perpendicular branch of the T-connector at the bottom. If you do not have water circulating here, you have the, hot, the, the, the cold water comes from the bottom part of the buffer. I'm going to show you this next in the video. The next element is in fact the big water buffer. This is designed by Froling and it is the energy reserve for the wall system. It collects 1,400 liters of technical water, that is the water Mm, circulating inside the boiler and also inside all the heating circuits of the house and of the factory. Let's analyze some technical aspects and details of the water buffer here. This buffer is also called solar layered tank. What does it mean? Solar because it is designed to work with both boiler and solar panels together at the same time. There is a coil inside where the water that is uh, heated up by the sun flows and exchange the heat obviously with the technical water inside. Anyway, we are not currently using this feature because we are green enough with a wood chip here, but in this case it, it was just a predisposition, maybe for, for future needs, let's say. It is called layered tank because of the working principle. You do have two different ways you, in which you can fill a tank without water. You can fill it from the bottom so that you have that the hot water obviously goes up inside the tank. At the end of the day, this is not going to be the optimal solution because you have that the hot water, let's say 75, 80 degrees is going to mix with the cold water all over the tank, okay? So you're going to have overall in the boiler a 50 degree, let's say, temperature. And this is not going to be the optimal solution and, and the optimal distribution of the thermal energy inside. The optimal solution is obviously the one adopted here by Froling and is the one of filling the tank from the top towards the bottom, okay? In this way you can keep it, the hot water remains at the top of the boiler and you have always layers of hot water that are slowing, that are being pushing down by the upper layers and then you are going to fill with layers of hot water, are pushing down the cold water so that you have a clear distinction between very high temperature 
hot water that is 75 80 degrees the one coming from the boiler and in the bottom you do have 40 50 degrees and they are gone they are returning towards the boiler in order to be heated up again okay in order to do that inside the tank there is a component that is called layered separator that helps the both the incoming and the outcome the returning water to be stored in the region where the water has a similar temperature why is this very useful and clever well when you do have to heat your house and the boiler is turned off, the heating pumps are going to take hot water from the top of the buffer and they can rely upon a very hot reserve of energy. That is not the case before, the downfilling scheme, okay? And this is going to maximize the efficiency of heating your house. The external surface of the tank is obviously insulated that is done to reduce thermal radiation, that is actually heat loss, something that we for sure don't want. There is a 100 millimeters layers of insulation, 80 millimeters of them are neopro material, that is, let's say, like a foam, and the other 20 millimeters are of uh, fleece material. This is the whole energy part storage, so it is now, let's say. Now let's pass to the house heating system, to the pumps and also the other pipings, okay? First of all, the water collector, that is the most important point here. It is collecting the hot water coming from the boiler and returning to the boiler, as well as all the hot water going towards the heating circuits, and again, the cold water coming from the heating circuits. In this point here, you have that the hot water coming from the boiler is distributed to all over the hot lines, and again, in the same way, you do have that the, all the cold lines are converging into one line, one pipe, that is the return point for the cold water inside the boiler. Notice also up in the roof here, all the red tanks that are called expansion vessels. They are correctly sized for the specific circuit they are mounted on. In fact, you can find a, bi you can find a big one that is for the main circuit, the, the boiler circuit, the heating circuit, and you can find the smaller ones that are those for the heating circuits inside the house. They are partially filled with hair, let's say a half of hair and half of water. The, the air is obviously the compressible part of the circuit. The aim of this component is to cushion shocks caused by water armors together with absorbing excess of pressure due to the temperature that raises up a bit much with respect to the regime volume. This is the configuration here. We do have three heating circuits, one for the factory, two for the houses, another one for the houses, sorry, and here we have this pump that is for the sanitary water, the, the, the tank here for the sanitary water. Let's start with the pump of the factory. There is a big manual water mixer that, as you see, is connected to both hot and cold water pipe in the water collector down there. So that the final water temperature that you are sending inside the factory is about 50 to 60 degrees. We need to have it quite low because the radiant panels in the factory do work with this temperature, okay? So we cannot send directly 80 degrees water from the boiler. As you see, the pump in this case is quite big with respect to the other, because the water flow required by these instruments is quite a lot. In fact, as you see, the factory is very big and we do have two parallel lines and the pump has to serve both of them, so there is a lot of flow requirements here. In this case, the pump is uh, manually activated since we do not have automatic control. Actually, if it is cold outside, we are going to turn it on. The most interesting and important part of the house heating system are those two independent controlled circuits, one for each floor of the house. Everything starts here in this SB group, that is actually the, the pump, together with the automatic regulator, okay? By removing the insulation coverage, you can see the scheme of the circulation unit. There are two parallel lines, the hot water line and the cold water line. And in the middle, you have an horizontal connection that is the one required to mix the water. The regulation of the water temperature is done automatically by this component here, or maybe you can also do it manually if you pull this. Oh no. Maybe <laughs> I pull too much. Another detail is this. These are temperature sensors underneath this insulating material and they are actually measuring the temperature, the outflow temperature for the water. The water that actually goes inside the radiator into the house. 
In this moment, we do have here about 40 degrees. That means that the house has been heated up completely, okay? Today outside, we do have 20, 25 degrees, so there is not that much requirement for the hot water, but usually here, you, you can see about 60 to 80 degrees, so it is, when it is very cold outside, and so the system has to heat up all of the house. All these temperatures, the outgoing temperatures, are computed automatically by the PLC inside the boiler. To do that, there are several parameters that have been taken into account. The set point temperature in the rooms, the one that you want in the house, the outside temperature, as I said today, we are quite hot, there are 20, 25 degrees, and finally, the model of the house. Uh, by model, I mean the thermal model of the house. It is a very simple and represents how the, the heating loss of the house, okay? So there is a small component in the regulation that takes also this, this parameter in consideration. Behind me, you can see the sanitary water tank. Also in this case, it is a solar one. It is obviously a predisposition. We do not have solar panels. In fact, as you see, there is a short circuit here. There are two independent coils inside. One is the, for the technical water coming from the collector. There is a pump here, letting obviously this water, the one coming from the boiler, to circulate inside the first coil behind me. And at the bottom, you do have another coil that is for the water coming from the solar panel. We do have a short circuit here because we are not using these features. So in order to maximize the heat exchange, we do want to have both coils heated up. This boiler contains 300 liters of sanitary water. This is the pump letting the wall system to be heated up. And I want to give you the intuition on life force. This has not the layered feature because it is much more simple. In this case, there is only one temperature sensor here. It is measuring 55 degrees at that moment. There is no layering control since, since this tank is much more simple than the one here, okay? It works like that. The set point temperature has been set to 55 or 60 degrees. I don't remember exactly. This is the set point. You do use hot water and once the temperature goes below 45 degrees, then this pump calls for hot water from the collector here and heats everything up to 55 degrees, as I said, okay? I just want also to give you a curiosity about this tank here. Once a week, the temperature goes to 65 degrees in order to kill the bacteria inside the tank, okay? This is done, as I said, once a week. Another small detail, this pump here is actually controlling a third independent circuit. It is manually activated, there is no automatic control since also in this case we do have just a predisposition for future need. It is not working at that moment and as you see there is no water mixing. That, that means that in this case you do have very hot water, 80, 75, 80 degrees hot water going to the heating line. Finally, the machine interface. In the boilers panel, you do have access to all the pages to set parameters, desired temperatures for the house floors, and also temperature for the sanitary water behind me. You can also choose different heating uh, time slots, let's say, independently one floor from the other. This is a very interesting feature and useful. Remember that you do have, obviously, thermostats that are temperature sensor inside the house, and they are not just simply sensor. They do have also a um, quite small selector, let's say, that gives you the possibility to turn on or turn off or standby function that is a little, little, stand, little different function in order to control automatically the, the, the heating system for the floor without the necessary to go down in the, in the central here. Okay, this ends the video description for the piping and instrumentation of our heating system. I hope that you liked the video, that this was interesting and also helpful for you, so please like and more importantly subscribe, okay? Bye!